Our next caller is Andrew from New York. What's up, Andrew? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Um, so basically, my, my question is, I work a job where I work four doubles in a row, uh, 3 p.m. to 7 a.m., 16-hour shifts, and then I have eight days off in a row. Um, right now, I have still been going to the gym in between my doubles because I, I feel like taking four days off in a row is a little bit awkward. Um, so I, I was wondering if it would be beneficial on the four days where I'm doing doubles to still go to the gym and do maybe like a lighter workout or if it would be more beneficial as far as getting a couple extra hours of sleep in between doubles and skipping four days off in a row completely. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with taking 40 days off a, 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 in a week. Um, not, a, not, a, or in a row, not a big deal. In fact, because of the hours that you're working, it's better to do that than it is to work out. But I will say this, you start at 3 PM. You said, I yeah. would try to do some kind of outdoor walking where you get sunlight exposure earlier in the day. You're going to need that to help with your circadian rhythm because that's really what's getting hammered with this kind of schedule. But I wouldn't do any workouts on those days. I would really focus all your attention on getting good sleep because I don't know if you've seen the statistics on the health effects of those types of shifts that they have on the body. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. It's like smoking cigarettes every single day. Throwing more stress on top of that with exercise isn't going to get you better progress. So get some sun exposure, you know, do some walking, leave the workouts for the eight days off in a row that you have when you can get better sleep. You are you active that whole time in your job? Like, are you moving around quite a bit? Um, no, it's actually a pretty sedentary job. Um, for the most part, uh, I'm in corrections, state corrections. Mm. So I, I, you know, on top of the 16 hour shifts, it's also, it, it might not always be physically taxing, but at least like from the mental aspect, like you're always on edge. So. Right. And I mean, is there like limited options in terms of like you being able to get up and move or like, you know, kind of break that up in, in chunks throughout your day, just doing like basic, you know, movements and walks and, and squats or something that you could do in terms of like, you know, around your desk. Yeah. So, I mean, for all 16 hours, I have to get up once every half an hour and do around wherever I am. So like, it's not like I'm just sitting for 16 hours. I have the freedom pretty much whenever I want to get up and walk around do whatever. Oh, I'm, I'm, I have a couple things. So the one, I think I wouldn't worry about taking the days off. And uh, I don't know. Did you hear Andrew, the episode where I, I referenced the study that uh, Lane Norton posted about, about a month ago? Did you, did you hear that episode? Yeah. Cause I, I follow Lane as well. Um, and I, I think it was a couple weeks ago that uh, they did, I think it was like a month long study or something like that, it, where they the two different groups and there wasn't really much difference at all that's right the there wasn't at all in fact the, the I, I believe if anything the the group that took the week off every three weeks uh, was as good or superior at the end of the i think it was a 16-week study and the, you had a group one group that every they trained consistently three weeks and they took a whole week off then three weeks consistently the whole week off compared to a group who never took any time off trained consistent the entire e time equivalent results at the yeah end. At the, so uh, and that high, highlights just the taking seven days off in a row does not set you as far back as you would think. And that's not taking into consideration your job. So your job that you have, that you're working 16 hours, it, it those days off are even more beneficial for you because of the points the guys are bringing up with stress. Yeah, and, and again, to kind of counter some of these postural positions, like that's why I was trying to get out. If you have opportunities to get up and do some mobility drills or do things where you're addressing uh those forward shoulder the the, the forward neck um it, you know to be able to get your spine in good alignment and just get up against the wall do a wall test you know practicing those things making ritual out of it will help to benefit you uh going back into your workouts next week so that i was that's where the other point that i was going to make was i don't know if you have the flexibility for like an hour lunch or whatever but um and if you have somewhere at work where you could hook up like a suspension trainer I would totally, if you're a client oh, of mine, yeah. I would totally let you do one to two days during your work shifts for a 20 minute, 30 minute, you know, suspension trainer type of workout. And I would, I'd probably, I'd probably modify it and gear it around posture stuff. So I'd be doing like W's and maybe some rotational exercises in there, but uh, a suspension trainer, 20, 30 minutes 
two of the days of the days that you're working the four days, mm-hmm. and then the most of your like heavy weight yeah. training just stuff. Just to keep is going sending on. a signal to uh, you know keep building muscle. Yeah, but I, honestly, if you focus on sleep and uh, during that time, that'll yeah. give you the biggest That's benefit. The biggest. So you know, Agreed. like I said, get sunlight uh, before you go to work. Make sure you get some good sun exposure, and then two hours before, because I'm assuming you go to bed when you get home and get some sleep. I would two hours before your shift ends, put on some blue light blocking glasses, get your brain kind of ready, and then make sure your room where you go to sleep is cool and blacked out uh, so that you can get some good rest. Because I'm telling you, if you look at the studies on the effects that these types of shifts have on people's bodies, yeah. it's it can be very detrimental. Very so I, I'm very cautious to throw any more stress at your body during these periods of time. Yeah, because I know you had mentioned earlier and about the circadian rhythm. That's another thing that's hard about it, too, because I go from the four days of doing overnight shifts and then I have eight days off. So, like, the first couple of days where I'm trying to transition back to going to bed at, like, 10, 11 o'clock at night, like, I barely get any sleep on those nights because it's going back and forth yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. Focus on sleep. Get that Brutal. sunlight during the day. Wear those blue light blocking glasses. That's going to give you the biggest impact. Okay. Thanks a lot. No problem, man. All right. I definitely... I. I definitely agree. We're all on the same page that. Well, dude, he's not only he's not only doing those shifts. Did yeah. you hear what he said? He tries to go back. He, he's literally jet lagging himself every yeah, week. Yeah, I know. I mean, that so is he, that he, is really. And this is where all these kind of little biohacking interventions do make sense because it's such an extreme schedule that it does take a toll on your body. Oh yeah, I mean, imagine that you're you're, you're up from three p.m. to seven a.m. four days in a row, and then you're trying to train or switch your body to going to bed at eleven o'clock at night. He's literally jet lagged every every single week doing this. Right. So sleep has got to be. A I mean, hundred percent. I agree that becomes the number one priority, and we have to address that first before I even consider letting you do anything in addition to that on those work days. But if if I can include some W's and some rotational stuff with the suspension trainer, some isometric stuff that's twenty minutes or thirty minutes on his sure. lunch break. I, you gotta because we gotta think too. Him being sedentary all day long, sitting at a desk. Yeah, your your body just forms into that, and like it becomes, it wants to stay in that state. Yes. So and more so to, to break it up, yeah, yeah, to get out of that state, I think is helpful. right. Like I, I definitely wouldn't give him an hour break, go hammer the weights at the gym or whatever like that. Like I'm not trying to get no, after just it. Just stimulate the muscles. That's right, and and I think he'll actually see an increase in in energy throughout his day from doing something like that. Plus counter. The, the rolled sh- shoulders and sitting forward all day long. So I, I do see some benefit to that. But of course, I would, as a coach who's coaching him, I would want like detail, like uh, how hard are you training? What are you doing? And mm-hmm. less is more with someone like that if we're going to be doing it on the work days. But yeah, address sleep first. I love the recommendation too with the getting out, yeah. you know, blue, red, blue blockers. Blue blockers. And this is where all the biohacking stuff, you know, come, totally. could Even come in handy. Juve light would help. Yep. Yeah. 